In this particular video, we are going to talk about ISO 12100. What is the scope of this particular standards, where it is used, and whether there is any uh, legal binding to use this standard in machinery design or not, that we are going to explore in this particular video. So, ISO 12100, this is a type A international standard. And it has the purpose to provide the designers an overall framework and guidance for the safe design of the machine. It enables designer to construct machine that are safe for their intended use. The concept of safety of machinery considers the ability of a machine to perform its intended function during its whole life cycle of the machine, that is from the transportation, installation, assembly to the use of the machine and at the end to the scrapping of the machine. So these standards cover the cradle to grave approach. This particular standard is cited in official journal of European Union under the machinery directive and has been implemented as a national standard in the European Union member states. That means that you can use this particular standard to design machine and when you do that, it will automatically comply to the essential health and safety requirement of the machinery directive 2006 42 EC, which is a binding law in European Union states. Also, in this particular standard, the guidance is given for documentation and verification for the risk assessment and risk reduction process. ISO 12100-2010 is also intended to be used as a basis of preparation of type B and type C standard. Now, type B and type C standards are more specific standard. Type A provide you general guidance, but the type A B provide you specific guidance about the what are the intended safety measures you need to take, what are the design uh, parameters you need to consider, but still, it is not specific to a particular machine. Whereas Type C talks about a particular machine. It may be a lathe machine, it may be a pressing machine, or something else. But it always talks about a particular machine there. So basically, Type A standard, ISO 12100, provides guidance or basis of preparation of type B and type C standards. Now, we have talked about this earlier, but again to clarify, there is a machinery directive known as 2006-42-EC. This particular directive directly refers to ISO 1210 for safe design of machinery. So, you design a machine according to ISO 1210 and that automatically complies to all the health and safety requirement of the machinery directive so you can sell you can use the machine in any of the european union states without any problem so that is the significance of iso 12100 and that is also the purpose of iso 1210 now how what are the basic components of the iso 1210 so first it talks about the limits of machinery so limits means with respect to space with respect to time with respect to any other limits like cleanliness the type of material processed all these things then it talks about the hazards identify different hazards right hazard can be with respect to the material you process with respect to the temperature with respect to the speed of the rotating parts of the machine after you identify hazard, you estimate the risk associated with each of these hazard, right? So, uh, what what is the risk each 
uh, hazard process. Some may uh, possess very high risk, some may possess low risk, right? So, and the risk is different. So, the risk associated with the overspeeding of rotating component of the machinery is not the same as the high temperature of the open parts of the machine. So, we need to identify the risk associated with the each of the hazard and then we can assign some risk priority number to each of the hazard to classify the hazard based on the amount of risk they process so that we can prioritize the action upon them. Next is reduce the risk. Obviously, we identified the risk. We have to reduce the risk to our acceptable limit. So every organization or country or directive gives you some acceptable limits of the risk. We need to reduce the risk below this level. Now, how we can reduce the risk? Risk can be reduced by the three methods as specified in ISO 1210. They are risk reduction by inherently safe design, risk reduction by the safeguarding or protective measures, and risk reduction by user information. So, first, so this risk reduction sequence should be always followed. Means you cannot go with risk reduction by user information before risk reduction by inherently safe design. You first go with the risk reduction by inherently safe design. Right? If you are unable to meet the required safe limit, by this method, then you have to go to the next method, which is risk reduction by the safeguarding. Even then, if you are not able to reduce the risk to this level you want, then you go to the next level. That is risk reduction by user information. And how this sequence came? This is through the fundamental of the risk reduction methodology, which talks about you first eliminate the risk, then you mitigate the risk, and if it is, uh, you first try to eliminate the risk, then you try to substitute the risk, then you use engineering controls, then you use administrative control. So, first step, that is risk reduction by inherently safe design, falls into the elimination category. Elimination or substitution also may fall into this. Then the risk reduction by the safeguarding or protection measures that goes into the engineering control, right? And the last one, the risk reduction by the user information that falls under the administrative control. So hope this hierarchy of risk reduction is clear to you.